Five days to go where fervor senses felt across all sectors. Air and land transport, stadia, medical and hospitality sectors find two stitches to welcome the continental tournament, Shan. The country squad is upbeat amidst fair performance at the recent pre-chant competition. Cameroonians are hopeful the indomitable lions will roar in their den. Socio-political unrest in the Central African Republic impacts fluidity of persons, goods and services. President Bia takes measures to ensure security, while territorial administration boss calls for vigilance to avoid criminal atrocities surfacing with refugee influx. And those are top stories. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks for joining us on this edition of the 730 News with me, Gladys Tata. I have personally observed that most of our fellow citizens no longer comply with the protective measures prescribed by the government. Welcome back from that advert. Five days to the start of the 2021 African Nations Championship, the town of Yaoundé is already dressed with car visuals and flags of the participating countries. One of Group A teams, Zimbabwe, is already in the nation's capital, Yaoundé, while the other Group A teams will arrive Tuesday and Thursday, respectively. Sports Minister Professor Nassis Mwele Kombi visited the Yaoundé Omnisports Stadium today to confirm its readiness ahead of Saturday's opening. Baldwin Summer tells us more. They have been enjoying Cameroon's legendary hospitality for several days. The intermediate stallions of Burkina Faso, one of Group A teams, have been lodged in this hotel on the outskirts of Yaoundé for several days where they have been training while waiting to officially move to their competition base. Our stay here so far is good. We have been training under good conditions and we hope everything continues the same way. The other Group A team, the Intermediate Eagles of Mali, are expected in Cameroon this Tuesday at 11 p.m. Meanwhile, Zimbabwe arrives on Thursday, January 14. Access tickets into the Yaoundé Omnisport Stadium are already available and they can be bought from the different sales points outlined by the Ministry of Sports and Physical Education. The prices of these tickets range from 1,000 CFA fans to 50,000 for the Yaoundé Omnisport Stadium. Some CAF officials already in Yaoundé and special vehicles have been put at the disposal of these officials to ease their movements in and out of Yaoundé throughout the competition. Around town can be seen some visuals announcing the competition with special calf messages to be read and flags of the different participating countries flying high. Sports and Physical Education Minister visited the Yaoundé Municipal Stadium to confirm its readiness ahead of Saturday's official opening ceremony. To verify all amenities, compliance and functionalities which can allow and permit the best organization. He also visited the makeshift COVID-19 test center at the stadium. Uganda, Zambia and Libya have intensified preparations in Douala a few days before the kickoff of the African Nations Championship in Cameroon. The three teams arrived at the economic capital city over the weekend. Rene Kache, you tell us more from Douala. The Mediterranean Knights of Libya arrived Cameroon on Sunday night via the Douala International Airport. The Serbian coach Zoran Filipovic says his players are all in good shape and their modest ambition is to win as many games as possible. We're going to do our best to, to play a good uh, in tournament. They will play friendly with Zambia on Wednesday at the annex of the Bepanda Omnisport Stadium. 
The intermediate ship Polo Polo of Zambia are currently lodging at the Deka Hotel in Bonaberry, Douala. The team arrived Douala from Yaoundé two days ago and held their first training session at the Kaji Sports Academy Centre in Bekoko on the outskirts of Douala. I am very happy to come to Cameroon, country of good people with good hospitality, uh, with a kind approach to the visitors uh, and to country of uh, not only football, but good football. The Ugandans, for their part, have adopted a zero-tolerance media policy. The team's press officer has told reporters that his boss, Jonathan McKinstry, has instructed every beating players or staff to stay away from the media. The team had their first and only training session on Monday morning at the annex of the Vipanda Omni Sports Stadium behind closed doors. Transport Minister jean Ernest Masen Angale Bibehe is in Cameroon's economic capital, Douala, accompanied by the local site president, Governor Samuel Jedoni Ivaha Diboa. Both authorities visited dispositions put in place at the Douala International Airport to receive the different delegations. Skola Maloke of CRTV Littoral tells us more in the following report. All is set at the Douala International Airport to receive the different delegations that will be trooping into the country for the African Football Championship Shan, which begins Saturday, January 16th. This assurance was made by Transport Minister Jean Ernest Masenangale Bibe on a walking visit to Douala this Monday to verify if all the necessary measures have been taken by the airport authorities. The minister accompanied not only by close collaborators, but the governor of the littoral region made a tour of the infrastructure to his satisfaction. We are satisfied with the work that has been done here. We have visited everywhere, including the toilets. A wonderful job has been done here to the satisfaction of our users. It was also an opportunity for the minister and his entourage to witness how passengers among them some Chan delegates are welcomed at the airport and in the COVID-19 health room. Well, uh, and then uh, to throw uh, some light, uh, you know, on the expectations of the people on their team and how to throw their weight behind the Intermediate Lions, welcome, into the studio, uh, welcome in the studio, Sa uh, Simon Lyunga Namolombe. Welcome, Simon. Thank you. Good evening, Gladys. Yes, uh, Simon, you are, manage, uh, you are the uh, manager of CRTV Sports and Entertainment uh, and senior reporter. Can you just tell us uh, the results of the Intermediate Lions, you know, during the pre chant tournament were not really good as everybody saw. And their fans, you know, uh, are complaining. Will it be right to say that uh, the team is in for a show? in this competition? Um, and not a poor show, uh, certainly, uh, Gladys. It is true that during the pre uh, chant tournament that took place here in uh, Yaoundé, the team had a very poor show, three matches, uh, no victory, one draw and a defeat. And of course, after their two-match uh, competition tour in uh, Douala, they had no victory, or one defeat and uh, one draw. So many people are saying it's going to be a poor show uh, when the team plays out here in Yaoundé for the competition. But experience has shown, uh, Gladys, that, that the team that wins the competition at the end of every international football event is not necessarily the team that had a wonderful show during the pre-competition tournaments. Uh, usually during competitions like the one we had in Yaoundé, the coaches have a couple of things that they are looking for. Mm -hmm. uh, they're usually looking for the best combinations that they have uh, for their team. They're looking uh, for the best complementarity between their players. They are looking... Uh, for the best second choice team that could sit in for the first team if need arises. Yeah, and of course, they are looking for a way of boosting up the morale of their players and fans uh, prior to the competition. It's true for Cameroon, the fourth objective, the field, but yeah. in the other three, only the coach and uh, his uh, assistants for now know if they attain their objective. But let me remind you, Gladys, uh, that when we talk about Cameroon, uh, during competitions that were won, most of them, uh, the team played very poorly during pre-competition um, tournaments and uh, they played very well during the competition. The I'll tell you, I'll give you, I'll tell you, I'll remind you that in 1984, when Cameroon won the first ever African Cup of Nations, uh, the team prepared, not even out of the country, they prepared here in Yete, 
that is in the ocean division of the South region, and they played no friendly match. They went out to Abidjan uh, and won the competition. In 1988, it was the same, and they went to Morocco and won the competition. In 1990, when Cameroon had the best performance and the first became and the, the first Cup African team to qualify for the quarterfinal of the World Cup, they played. They went to Yugoslavia for the competition, played nine friendly games. They won only one, and that was against the under-23 team of uh, Yugoslavia. But when they went for the competition, it was a wonderful competition. So the output of a team during preparations doesn't guarantee a victory or a, well, good, a good performance, performance. Uh, during the competition. Yes, uh, Simon, with all you just said, uh, so what should we expect from the fans, mm. you know, from all over the country? First of all, the fans have to have, they're supposed to develop confidence in their team mm -hmm. uh, and know that the host and win syndrome is on. Mm -hmm. Since the, the African National Championship started in 2009, only Morocco have succeeded to host and win and that was in 2018. And uh, so uh, the Cameroon can do that. And for them to do that, they must count on the 12th player. And the 12th player is usually the supporters. That's why the Minister of Sports and Physical Education alongside the government of Cameroon did everything for the fans to be in the stands. Mm -hmm. Remember, during the COVID period, most of uh, football arenas and of course other sports uh, uh, stadiums around the world uh, are play or games are played without the fans. But this time around, the government of Cameroon did everything, negotiated well with the Confederation of African Football and they accept accepted that the fans should attend uh, those matches. So they are supposed to turn out in their numbers for the first round of the competition, mm -hmm. around alongside the six, uh, eight final games, we are going to have 20 percent, uh, 25 percent of uh, the capacity of the stadium. Uh, in the stadium, for example, if uh, the, the Amado Ajo Stadium is to host 100,000 people, for example, mm -hmm. for the matches we are going to host only 25,000 people. But for the semi-finals and the finals, it's going to be 50%. And those semi-finals and finals, don't remember, don't forget, they'll be played in Douala Japoma, mm -hmm. they'll be played in Limbe mm -hmm. and the Amado Ajo Stadium. So for the Japoma Stadium that hosts 50,000 people, for the semi-finals they are going to host 25,000. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, as you just said it off from the uh, manager of CRTV Sports and Entertainment, uh, who is a senior sports uh, journalist, senior sports editor, I beg your pardon, Simon Leonga Namolombe. Thank you for being here. My pleasure. Thank you very much. My pleasure. And uh, we continue with uh, another, uh, uh, this thing here. During the African Nations Championship, Cameroon's Intermediate Lions could probably pin hopes on players like Jacques Zoua and keeper Hashua Kerido to excel in the competition. Some of these players have uh, gathered enough experience in clubs and country assignments in recent times. Who are some of these uh, players to watch for in Cameroon's squad? Romeo Kenya tells us more. Eight key players with a defined mission, that of raising the country's flag high during the African Nations Championship on home soil. Greater expectations will certainly lie on the shoulders of IS Futuro goal getter Jacques Zoua, a part amassing sufficient ingenuity within and out of the country. The 2017 AFCON winner is undoubtedly a kingpin in the squad. A beautiful combination up front with teammate Joseph Yannick Jeng may simply reassure the selection of a fruitful trip in the Shan. A blend between Francis Elimbi of Star Rena of Melong and Serge Andulo of Union of Douala can simply be termed an excellent pair to maneuver the midfield. Both players recently demonstrated a high sense of game mastery in the mini warm-up tournament. Meantime, Cotton Sports duo Banga Benjamin Salomon and Thierry Twente will be expected to impose hegemony at the defensive compartment. The goalkeeping QB hole is endowed with goalies of great esteem. PWD short stopper Hashu Kerido has ripped maturity along local clubs, the indomitable lions of Cameroon and out of the country. Dande Junior of Apeja Sonfu has got ample skills to showcase in the goal post. The medical aspects of uh, Cameroon's hosting of the African Nations Championship are being prepared as athletic events are often associated with emergency situations. The technical platforms of major hospitals in the nation's capital have been upgraded. Let's begin by making rounds in these hospitals to see how they are bracing up for the event. In the first of our new series on emergency, Beatrice Lassamba takes us today through the gates of the Yaoundé Central Hospital. She reports the most frequented hospital in the nation's capital is already wearing its Shan outfit. Beatrice? Should emergency situations arise any time during the upcoming African Nations Championship, they will meet qualified response. 
at the Yaoundé Central Hospital. This most visited hospital in the nation's capital now wears the coat to provide prompt care needed in case of sports-related visits during the sporting event that will see all of Africa pour out on Cameroonian territory. The Central Hospital has experience in providing health care during sporting events. No matter the care needed, we are equipped to provide high-quality care. The sportsmen, VIP guests and Shan officials have separate units at their disposal. Injuries severe enough to require hospitalization will be referred here. The hospital's inpatient bed capacity has been stepped up to that effect. The specialists and emergency room nurses have been trained to be familiar with the function and operation of emergency equipment acquired. We have acquired specialized scanners and some more sophisticated equipment are on the way. We have an oxygen unit here. The hospital will liaise with first responders to provide prompt response, a certified blood bank, a coronary care unit, an ambulance on site. Important contact information well scripted and at the fingertips of staff. The hospital's gates will stay open anytime in the course of the athletic event. Business operators in the city of Boya in the southwest region are reinforcing their structures and replenishing their stocks as the population build up to the takeoff of the football jamboree 2021 in the southwest region. From Boya, our reporter Walter Wilson Nana tells us more that preparations are gaining steam. At the business hub in the city of Boya, which is a class quarter neighborhood, it is a bustling atmosphere with shopkeepers, bar owners, eateries, supermarkets, and other social joints reorganizing their setups and creating a lot more space to accommodate their existing clientele and the hundreds of people who are expected in the city for the Chan 2021. They are trying to bring in extra services, trying to stock the shop, making sure that our customers are satisfied. Fight. The popular Yaoundé bar in Boya, the manager says they are stockpiling variety of drinks to satisfy all their customers. We are stocking, but we hope to the brasseries will like to bring in all the choices. One of the provision and wine shops, the sales girl Dahlia, reassures all those coming to the city of Boya that the variety are endless. According to Joan, who is the finance manager of the biggest supermarket in Boya, they are set to deliver to all those coming to the Chan in the South West region, including the tickets for the matches. And on to other news now, an official of the United Nations Refugee Agency says over 4,500 new Central African refugees have crossed to Garabulai in the east region of Cameroon following the escalation of the violence and insecurity in the neighboring country. Presiding over a security meeting in Garabulai, Territorial Administration Boss Paula Tanganji called for vigilance so that criminality does not resurface within with the influx of refugees. We have these details with uh, Ebenezer Akanga. As violence and insecurity rages on in the Central African Republic, the number of refugees fleeing to Garabulai in the east region of Cameroon is on the increase. According to an official of the UN Refugee Agency, 4,500 new Central African refugees have fled to Garabulai. 142 Central African soldiers have also escaped to Garabulai. The UN agencies are receiving and providing care to the refugees, but complain of a drastic reduction of resources. While on a special mission to Garabulai, on high instructions of the head of state, the Minister of Territorial Administration, Paul Atanganji, visited the refugees and transmitted encouragement of the government to the UN agencies. At a security meeting, Paul Atanganji called for vigilance so that criminality should not surface with the influx of the refugees. The head of state told me to come and extend his high appreciation to all the traditional leaders who have been doing this wonderful job and that we should strengthen collaboration between the local administrative authorities and the traditional rulers. The 4,500 new Central African refugees come to add to about 25,000 others who are in the Gado Baziri refugee camp around Garwa Bulai. 
We stay in the East region to talk about the population of Garuabulai who have expressed gratitude to President Paul Bia for taking special measures to ensure the security of persons and their property in the border town following the socio-political unrest in the Central African Republic. Despite the preoccupying situation and the influx of more and more refugees from the Central African Republic, life is going on normally in Garuabulai. As you tell us, Mokom Robert Acho in Bertua. While on a special mission to Garabulai and assigned by the head of state, President Paul Bia, the Minister of Territory Administration has assured the population that measures have been taken to reinforce security at that border town. State institutions have taken measures to protect people and their property. Restaurants and other business places are going about their business normally. However, it is a fear of some of the heavy-duty vehicle drivers that if the present situation persists, things may change for the worse. If the situation is not stabilized, in a few days, what is taking place in the Central African Republic with increase in prices will take place here. Inhabitants of Garabulai, while expressing gratitude to the head of state, President Paul Bia, for the present security situation, all their hopes for better days ahead are focused on the Minister of Territorial Administration, Paul Atakanji, who has assured them that President Paul Bia will relent no effort in protecting all inhabitants of our beloved country. Over in Gaoundere, the pioneer president of the Adamawa Regional Council, Dr. Muhammadu Dewa, has, been, has sworn to serve the population of the region faithfully, irrespective of political leanings, religious or ancestral lineage. He took the oath during a solemn ceremony at the Adamawa Court of Appeal, presided at by Chief Justice Roger Kamchum in the presence of a host of dignitaries. Details with Rakiatu Musa Jingi from CRTV Adamawa. Hundreds of Adamawa inhabitants witnessed the trailblazer, president of the Adamawa Regional Council, swear before God and man to serve the people of the region impartially as he takes up duty. Dr. Muhammad Dewa promised to be loyal, render fairness with enthusiasm as he takes firm commitments on this day. I'm very happy. My job is to grow our region because we have many problems. The problem of the root health, particularly education for the young girls. Everything we are going to try to do our best. The president of the Adamawa Court of Appeal, Chief Justice Roger Kamchum, urged Dr. Muhammad Dewa to scrupulously respect the law as he champions this new chapter in the development of the region without discrimination, favoritism or political bias. The installation took place in the presence of Adamawa Governor Kildadi Tage Kebukar. I urge you once again to put on your face masks, to wash your hands regularly, and to consult a physician or any other health personnel if you notice any symptoms. This is the only way to save lives and to curb the spread of the virus. Tonight, we begin our series of the weekend on violence on the campus. From March 2019 to February 2020, about five students and a teacher lost their lives in school as a result of such violence. Cynthia Sabtala takes us back through these incidents in schools nationwide to see what changes have been made to improve on the situation. Cynthia? March 2019, Cameroonians nationwide followed with horror the story of a Form 4 student of the government bilingual school, Deido, in Douala, who attacked, stabbed and killed a Form 5 student after an altercation. It's been about two years now, but the memories of that incident continue to live on. The campus now possesses about 16 cameras stationed at several points. Violence is a reality on campus and must be checked at all costs. The school had the same uniform as some others around, so it was easy for outsiders to blend in. Girls used to keep long hair and put drugs like tramadol in it. Changes have been made by school authorities since this incident. 
The uniform has been changed, walls elevated, amongst other measures. But the teachers continue to advocate for parents to be more involved in the upbringing and education of their teenage children. They say some of these troubled teens often carry heavy emotional baggages from home to school. Rethinking the way of education and training in Africa such that priority is given to ICT development is key of the African Union. For this reason, the African Union Commissioner for Human Resources, Science and Technology, Professor Seram B. Eno Anya Agbo, has applauded the African Institute of Computer Sciences at EIE Cameroon for training Africa's future entrepreneurs. Yoti Kaleli Songe reports. A reference on the continent for ICT training, an institution that shoulders Africa's digital development, is the African it's Institute of Computer Science, of EIE. Mission. Today we speak about schools that create jobs, and I believe EIE is an example of the kind of schools we need to promote all over the continent. Africa is 70% youth, but if we do not give them the right competencies and skills, then they'll be jobless. EIE Cameroon gets a thumbs up for a job well done in educating future entrepreneurs. 11 countries came together to create this school. I would like to thank His Excellency President Paul Bia for this vision. I'm using this opportunity to felicitate the EIE representative here in Cameroon. An admiration that gives the institution the zeal to do more. ICT can have a, a, a great action against uh, that pandemic. EIE's 2035 vision to train 1 million youth and women is intertwined with the AU's 2063 education and entrepreneurship agenda to enable Africa evolve technologically. With the influx of many persons into the country ahead of the shine, measures have been put in place at the different airports to limit the spread of the coronavirus. Everyone coming into the country is subjected to, an to another COVID-19 test at the airport before entering into Cameroon. For more, let's join Baldwin Sama at the Public Health Emergency Center with his guest, Dr. Eva Ewa Sama with updates. Hi, uh, Baldwin. Good evening to you, Gladys Tata. In fact, that's the major question, the major concern for most Cameroonians. Why these other tests at the airport upon arrival, given that most of them had been screened for COVID-19? We discussed that with Dr. Ewa Sama. He is an epidemiologist. Good evening to you, Doctor. Good evening, Baldwin. Why the need for another test at the airport upon arrival? Thank you very much, Baldwin, for that important question. Um, the Cameroon government have uh, taken that uh, measure, that decision, for several reasons. The first one is that, as we know, there is a new strain of COVID-19 circulating around the world, I think, and the, the, the strain is already present in Africa. Secondly, we had want to make sure to avoid the introduction of that strain in our country. We want to make sure of limiting the number of uh, cases circulating in our communities. And uh, lastly, uh, it is important uh, uh, to make sure that everybody entering the toilet is negative. And the reason of the retesting uh, people who are entering the toilet tree is that uh, the COVID-19 test can become positive at any moment, depending on the date uh, which the, the person has been in contact with the virus. So there is a time frame uh, that can uh, lead to the, to the test to become positive. That is why it is important uh, upon arrival to retest people who have been already tested uh, in their country. When they... Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Ewa Sama, for all those details. Don't be surprised uh, when you are subjected to another screening upon arrival at the airport, any airports in Cameroon. Back to you, Gladys Tata. It's very much, and uh, just to say, a stitch in time saves nine. Why not many tests, uh, Baldwin? It's hope to be in your company tomorrow. And we take you to the West Region where victims of the Guache landslide incident in the Bafusam 3 subdivision have benefited from bags of cement to construct their houses at the resettlement site near the Bamungum Palace. The gesture was that of the Cameroon Company of Petroleum Depots, SCDP. It was during a ceremony presided over by, the gov by Governor Awa Fonka Augustine, who called on the beneficiaries to use the materials and effectively construct their, res their resettlement site. Details with Ngu Henry in Bafusam. 
After the landslide incident that claimed some 43 lives in Guashe last year, some 191 families were forced to quit the Rix zone and resettle near the Bamungum Palace. 151 of them have already acquired plots and they benefited from building materials plus financial support. Some of them have started constructing at the resettlement site. The beneficiaries were grouped into two categories, 11 who lost their homes and their relatives and 140 who were asked to leave the risk zone of Ngwashio 4. The 11 each received 17 bags of cement, while the 140 others, 5 bags each. The West Chief Executive, Awa Fonko Augustine, has loaded the gesture. He called on the beneficiaries to use the materials to construct their houses at the resettlement site. Well, uh, before we take leave of you, this uh, press release uh, from the Ministry of Defence. Uh, the Ministry of Defence hereby informs that at midday on Sunday, 10th January 2021, and based on information received from the population, elements of the 21st Motorized Infantry Battalion carried out a preventive raid on the positions of terrorist groups under the orders of the so-called Spirito and Gabonet in the locality of Motu, Moyuka Subdivision, Fako Division of the Southwest Region. At the site of military vehicles, these armed individuals surprised in the middle of their gathering immediately opened fire on the elements of the defense forces who provided an adequate response. As a result of the skirmish, some terrorists were neutralized, others who were injured took to their heels, weapons and munitions were recovered, and combining operations are still ongoing in the area to find any injured fugitive. It is worth underscoring that in the evening of this uh, operation, carried out in strict compliance with the rules of uh, engagement, terrorist leaders, pro proponents of cessation, apparently overwhelmed conceived in their occult offices a hodgepodge of gruesome images in a bid to blame our defense forces for a blind massacre perpetrated in Motu. In any case, High Command has prescribed thorough investigation to clarify this obscure machination and to shed light, if necessary, on the content of the gruesome images in circulation. And it has been signed by a Navy captain Atongfak Ngemo Siri Serge, head of communication unit. You'll be in the company of Adele Mbala at uh, 8.30 for the news in French. I'll be back same time tomorrow. Until then, it's good night from all of us on the 7.30 crew. Despite our efforts, COVID-19 plunged many families into mourning and seriously hampered the functioning of our economy and society. TV News, ici, toute l'info.